and researching and how to defend yourself. Study. Study the, study the psychology of an attacker. I think you have to study your enemy. Lucky Boys Podcast. We're going to facts, right? So, you know, the, the, when it spread in, the, in New York, it didn't come from Asia. It came from Europe. So Where did it originate from, though? Did they find that out yet? Well, did the, yeah, they're saying it originated from Asia. Okay. China. So, okay. yeah, if it originated, if there's facts that support it, yeah. So it originated in, 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 in China. But if we're talking about the, the outbreak here in New York City, that mm-hmm. came from Europe. You know, that mm-hmm. came from a guy, the dude from Italy or something. And he came back and then he spread it in a synagogue or some, you know, something. Oh, that's right. With the, with the Jewish lawyer mm, yeah. on, um, in Midtown. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. We talked about that on a podcast yeah. about a year ago. Isn't yeah, that crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a year and a half ago. ago. But yeah, anyways, anyways, we can't do anything about it, and we're we're gonna get hate for being Asian. It's mm. just a fact of the matter, and all we can do now is just equip ourselves. You're talking about arming up, meet violence with greater violence and with more veracity, and that's mm-hmm. the only way to stop it. How many other people are like you in that sense, where they weren't trained, but they would just follow the school route and and they focused on that, and gave all the energy to that. How do they all of a sudden learn how to become violent? Because, you know, even even people who are trained in fighting, if they don't fight for a long time and they get in a physical confrontation, they'll get rusty. Either, yeah, yeah, they're shocked. They'll sh- they'll yeah, get the shakes. Yep. They'll um, you know, and they could be you know familiar with fighting. They 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 may not be a stranger to it, but it's still a little bit strange to them mm-hmm. you know you can't you know that fight or flight hits adrenaline anxiety when you get people don't understand when you're in a real world combat situation all of those emotions just you know gets all in at once and and then it comes to a halt and you're just like holy shit mm-hmm. right how do you get someone to get to the level versus someone who is mentally disturbed who mm-hmm. has a history of violence because a lot of these people are repeat offenders who's been to the university of jail as you were saying if you're not well equipped to protect yourself you better get something that can protect you whether it's mace mm-hmm. you know pepper spray yeah. a little tiny weapon a walking stick you can use to hit someone yeah. or just have friends around you peers around you they say you have to meet the violence when you're in a situation you have to and you have to be prepared to hurt them absolutely because at the end of the day, it's going to be either you or them. That's it. And that's what they all tell me. That's what they all tell me. They say, Sometimes you cannot. Sometimes there is no reasoning with people. These evil people are trying to hurt innocent civilians. There's no reasoning with them. You can't talk your way out sometime. There's a, a psychological barrier for a lot of people who wasn't raised in that. Exactly. Yeah. Or cut from that cloth mm-hmm. to hurt someone. They're just, they, they really can't. Put that together there's so many people that i mean i know a lot of people that could talk a tough game too and not really mm-hmm. walk the walk right and and i get that you know it's 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 hard thing to do to if you're not used to it in that scenario when someone's confronting you or being mm-hmm. confrontational to meet that and be prepared to do more it's easy to say right it's easy to talk about but once you have emotions thrown in it's hard to apply logic and and be very situationally aware right. of what's going on without that experience how do you what's your advice to people who are who has something like that where they know it's the right thing but they just it, they have the psychological barrier mm-hmm. and and get them prepared for that real world situation so as you said if they're uh book nerds right bookworms who've just studied their whole life and didn't really have much physical activity or training then they should at least study study violence they should study the art of um self-protection self-defense they could read books on it they could watch film on it they could watch videos on youtube on it and to at least become aware of how to protect uh yourself and then eventually they can go out of their shell and start practicing on their own but it's a, it's a step-by-step process you know i'm not expecting a, a bookworm to all of a sudden become batman and fight on the streets Step by step, read on it. There's so many books on violence, so many books on self-protection, self-defense. If reading is your thing, studying is your thing, get a bunch of highlighters, get some pens, and start researching on how to defend yourself. Study. Study the, study the psychology of an attacker. I think you have to study your enemy. I think it goes back to what you said, and I'll share a quick story. I, I had a friend who 
was bullied growing up mm -hmm. and he decided he asked me what you know what do you think about me taking self-defense classes i said absolutely i think it's always good to mm -hmm. um apply extra knowledge in your life no matter what it is and if you want to add that to your arsenal i think that's great and it's great exercise so he did that he went and uh trained self-defense boxing he took both and um but i did tell him i said don't let that mess with your confidence and he said what do you mean i was like don't think that just because you take this meaning that you could beat someone up because that may not be the case yeah that's the flip side actually um a lot of self-defense instructors one of their main problems as an instructor is giving their clients or the students a false sense of security that's it i always tell my clients if you can run run if you can run run don't be a tough guy just mm -hmm. because you're training every day a few hours a day i don't care if you're fighting someone at the end of the day both of you guys will be a loser right because so, one of you guys will get hurt i mean both of you guys will get hurt in a fight in a fight definitely yeah. there's a loser and a loser especially in a street fight you don't think you're gonna get hit and get hurt and get rocked mm -hmm. yeah maybe you'll knock someone out in the process maybe you'll break your hand mm -hmm. or you get bloody nose mm -hmm. or, or you, you get die. a little shank in your or you could die you, or you could yeah. die mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you're, he had that he both had that of you guys are losers in, in a fight all right and he had that false sense of security so he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone that oh, he shouldn't have god he weighed more the guy was bigger than him <sighs> and he knocked his ass out okay and laid him out and you don't and know. he had a chance to run he had a chance oh god that's but the he, worst and he you don't know if the pushing. other guy has friends too what if friends come and that with a right. knife anytime you you go in <clears throat> you're risking your life right you, and a lot of people don't know that when you're getting in a fight you're risking your life either you may end up in a hospital you may end up six feet or you may end up in jail mm -hmm. even if you're not in the wrong even if someone else initiated it's usually mm -hmm. uh if you cause so much damage to the other person and they may look at it as unnecessary yeah mm -hmm. you could go to jail i mean how many people There's do we know a lot <laughs> that, that won fights fight that ended up man. you know right. in more trouble mm -hmm. yeah it's just have. it's just not worth it it's definitely not worth it there's too many um uncontrollable factors in the street you know you don't know if the guy has a weapon you don't know if he has friends you don't know if he's connected with um, you know big time lawyers that could sue your ass right right fighting is never worth it d that's why de-escalation methods are mm -hmm. so important mm. right but don't get it twisted if your back's against the wall you do everything it, you can absolutely. to get out get out from that everything bite his ears off gouge his eyes rip his groin yeah do whatever you can shatter his kneecaps how do you shatter someone's kneecaps like just just so you can, stomp knee, you can knee stomp knee it. stomp yeah. the guy how many ways does the knees bend one way right <laughs> Not that many ways. help it <laughs> bend the other way boom the knee stomp Oh. that'll stop him from coming at you yeah tears mcl tears acl tears lcl do a strong low kick mm -hmm. boom with your shin so so in terms of self-defense right for for people who are her you know taking just to protect themselves mm -hmm. do you recommend these these moves or is there more of absolutely i i train some 60 year olds i train some 70 year olds i train some i train some seniors and i give them really easy methods you know mm -hmm. just push kicks you know C-shaped strikes to the trachea, eye gouges, elbows, knees. And that works it could be because a lot you know? of these people who are attackers, they aren't trained fighters. Just keep that in mind. They may be big. They may be, yeah. um, they look athletic in a lot of these situations. They may look aggressive, but they're yeah, not I, trained I have, fighters. I actually have one 170 year old that I train who's actually in this place right now. He's sitting in the couch. He's an anomaly. He, he, he can beat up some, some dudes easily. He's... I gotta show you some videos of uh, mm -hmm. Art doing some knife oh, disarming, I believe gun it. disarming. Let's see it. I believe it because yeah, I know I know boxers in their sixties. Yeah, like well, people that have been trained in boxing yeah. their whole life, and I yeah. met a couple of guys in their sixties. Yeah, bro, their cross punch was, or even their jab could hurt a lot of people. Yeah. It's like I yeah, wouldn't sleep you, on them. Yeah, if, if the people viewing this, if you need motivation, look at Art Golden on Instagram. <laughs>